another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK. His name is Bricky. Oh boy, Warhammer 40k. But before we get into that, if you enjoyed today's episode and maybe you want to support us, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous where you can get access to uh, bloopers if they happen, the Discord, uh, the $15 tier gets you access to all of our just wonderful beautiful HD posters uh, in digital format. And if I'm not mistaken, we have a new Halloween poster. Good timing. I I imagine it will not hurt. Well, so Shy has this thing, right? We have a new Halloween poster, but she's only going to show it to me. Uh, because it's it's an elf themed poster, and Bricky is just eh, you know you know he'll, he'll, Shy says he'll whine and cry like a quarian with a tummy ache. So check it out, me. I'll be reacting. Bricky doesn't even get to react. And then and then Tally stands there like I'm standing right here. Oh shit! Oh that, wait, this is really good. That new po- wow. I, okay, so I've only seen the work in progresses. Like I've I've only seen. The sketches and wow, that you know, you know what? Shy, Shy says didn't ask Bricky. He's like, well, I don't <laughs> care. I'm I'm giving my input. I'm part of this too. Go ahead, like Bricky. Poster. Go ahead. No, it's good. I like poster. I mean, you could the ear the ears could be shorter, but besides that, like it's good. Oh my god, the ears could be short. <laughs> oh man, the, yeah, it's it's great. If you just take away everything that makes it an L. <laughs> Hey, you know, hey, hey, hey um, <laughs> I I don't know how to pronounce this. What is it? De los Muertos. Dia de Muertos? los Muertos. Yes. The day of uh, the dead. Yep. That as a death jester, I think, is a very, very good idea. It's a very good concept. Mm-hmm. I I so I, like I, I am okay with it. Hallis Day again it... absolutely slaughtered this. Really, really good. So. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous and uh, Bricky will have it up at the store at some yeah. point. No, it, it'll be up now. But by the time oh, oh, now, you, now, uh, now. okay, yeah. By the you time you watch this it. video, it'll be up. It'll be good. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to grab your Halloween merch at Orchidate.com along with the new poster. Um, the it'll all be there until the end of Halloween, in which once it's over, only two products will stick around. The new Little Lord T and the hat. Uh, other than that, all of the fun glow in the dark stuff that will all be gone. So um, check it out, orchidate.com. Don't forget to uh, to get the poster along with it. I bought all the right. Detective Ridiculous hoodie. I had to. Uh, I I really like the front one, like the Freddy Krueger esque yeah, vibe to it. It's such a cool design. Oh my god. Yeah, the the artist did a really fantastic job. Hell yeah. Buddy. So. Speaking of Halloween, Halloween, it's time for a new episode. DK, um, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, ah, uh, I, I can't, I can't find a quote that is like, oh shoot, no quote. Guess you'll just man have to didn't tell even me let me finish. Is. And I guess I'll have to find some other way to look like an idiot this episode. Oh no. You bitch. <laughs> what? You said no quote. You couldn't find one. I hey. That, I, I did not say that. I, I that's you, what I you heard. Cut me off. That's what I heard. That's what I that's all I heard. You you got you got blinders. The moment you heard no quote, you were like, <laughs> Yay, I'm free! Yes! Celebrate, I'm free. I couldn't find a quote that, that accurately describes what we have going on today without making it so obvious. And if, or <laughs> making it so not obvious, uh, it's, either it's either too, too obvious vague or too blunt. Exactly. So I, I have a hard time. Mm. Um, there, there is a fun quote, which is the first axiom of freedom is that justice without force is powerless and force without justice is tyranny, which can wow. be attributed to like anything. Yeah, I was going to say that's like 90 percent of the things in, in 40K. So in that case, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what we're doing today. Hell um, yeah, brother! You know, actually, I'm going to make. I'm still going to make you guess because I, I want to hurt a you. Bitch. I'm so 
it's a Space Marine chapter. Uh huh. We're doing Space Marines. We're doing a Primark. It's it's we're back to the good days. A Primark. What? Uh oh. Primark. So it's got to be either uh uh the Space Wolves or I'm gonna guess Lehman Russ. Not even knowing anything, Lehman Russ. You do you even know what other ones we still have to do? Nope. It's not Lehman Russ. How does that have anything to do with Halloween? Because he's a stupid wolf viking. It's Corvus Corax. It's the raven guy. Oh, that was my next guess. It's Halloween. Why would you? All right. That's true, right. Corvus. If, so I didn't, I didn't remember which other Primarchs we had. If I, I, I know you didn't. I know you anyway. didn't. I know. Anyway, Corvus Corax. Corvus Corax of the Raven Guard. The Raven Lord <sighs> The liberator, the deliverer, chooser of the slain, mm. shadowed lord, other edgy titles to give him, etc. It, it just dawned on me that you didn't have a quote, and I still got it wrong. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. <sighs> I am I, in I Spain think, without the S. I am in Spain without the A. <laughs> we. We. <laughs> Spin. Um, I, I mean, you had like three options. You had Lehman Russ, Corvus Corax. Uh, yeah, but it's Magnus. a Halloween episode. It should have been obvious. It should have been obvious. All right. So anyway, Corvus, sorry. Corvus Corax. Um, you know, leader of the Raven Guard, the nineteenth Legion, if I am not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. going into this episode, I was like, huh. Uh, he, he does not have a whole lot of lore. Really? Uh, not as much as I expected. And I think the oh. main reason for that is that he was found pretty late in the uh, Great Crusade. And I don't talking? think uh, like over 100 years into the Crusade. Oh, like pretty deep things that were already pretty <laughs> happening. Century in, huh? <laughs> Uh, not just that, um, which, you know, humorously a century is like nothing for, for yeah, us. Yeah, for 40k, that's true, is nothing. But, um, yeah, he was found really late, and I don't think he has a dedicated Primark growing up book. You know, like, like, uh, some people oh. like Dorn have a, have a Primark book, but it's mainly centered around his time in, in the heresy and, and around yeah. there. Whereas, like, Percherabo, Alpharius, Kurs have a lot more of their early life backstory available. Yeah. Um, so he doesn't really have a lot of that. Oh, wait, Shai says, Corax, Corax, Lord of Shadows, Lord of Shadows. Wait, is okay, that right. really what his book is called? Lord of Shadows? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, Lord is, of that, Shadows? Is, that one, is that one about his growing up? shy or is that just a book about him during like the crusade and stuff i specifically said growing up i bet it because I bet dorn has a book but dorn does not have a book about his early life see i told you god no one's listening to me today everyone's cutting me off halfway well see i cut you off because i knew i was going to be wrong if i let you finish yeah but shy cut me so, off because she thought she had a chance to be right well yeah but that's 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 like prototypical shy like what what are you expecting man that's a good point. Anyway, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of his growing up stuff. Uh, and he also comes in pretty late into the Great Crusade. Mm-hmm. And he also is one of the few Primarchs that got hit in the drop site massacre. So he doesn't have a lot oh, going on. Um, he got the triple true. whammy. Yeah, he, he does get hit pretty hard in the drop site massacre, doesn't he? Yeah. Lorgar! Uh, Fucking Lorgar. No, but but even so, even with his kind of low volume of lore, unlike um, Ferris Manus, I actually think he's kind of cool. I, I like Corvus Corax. He's got a, a really decent amount of intrigue to him, mm-hmm. and he's uh he's just he's just kind of neat. So let's uh, let's chat. Okay, let's chat. I I am I am excited to hear about the Primark for the Raven Guard. Uh, that also means we're probably doing a Raven Guard episode next week, which is which is hype. Uh, so yeah, let's let's talk about him. Yeah. So anyway, his home world is just impossible to pronounce. Uh, Lacaius, Lacaius, I'm gonna go Lacaius. L. It's L Y C A E U S. 
Lachias. I'm going to go with yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's what I would have tried to, Lachias. Something like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. So naturally, uh, you know, I reiterate this for people who are just new and they're like, I want to learn about the Raven Guard. Uh, you know, one of Emperor's many Primarch sons, Chaos, grabbed them, played a giant galactic game of keep away, threw them across the galaxy. <laughs> yeet! Big old yeet. Uh, and he landed over into this lightless chamber underneath the surface of this barren moon called Lachias. And this moon orbited the planet uh, Kiavar, I think is what I would pronounce it as. Okay. Um, that is a. It is. That, that picture of Lachias is yeesh. It's a dark place. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> Just a few spots with light. Uh, so, Kiavar, the planet itself, not the moon, was a advanced forge world with factories bringing in materials mined from. Typically, minor slaves, as is the Imperium and 40K, the like. Sure. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, well, I guess this isn't actually really the Imperium much here, because uh, it's a it's a different off world. But uh, despite that, it is very much a, a bunch of mine like uh, minor overlords and their slaves. Yeah, that's um, that's forty k for you. So Corvus was actually taken from the slaves uh, that found him on the moon. And were hidden. Uh, they hid him from their overseers. Now, okay. the slaves were among a lot of different kinds of people. Some were criminals. Some were political opponents. Some were workers who just, you know, didn't quite meet that quota. Yeah. Uh, but naturally, like all Primarchs, he grew up incredibly quick, became really smart, became really strong, way faster than anyone would ever expect. And so because of that, a lot of the mining slaves gave him the name Savior or Deliverer as they believed him to do very much within his future deeds. Ah, so I'm I'm assuming uh, Corvax is going to overthrow the slave uh, leaders and then the Raven Guard is going to rise up from the slaves that are saved alongside Corax. It, you you got a pretty good pretty good understanding of it for the most part, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it, as story. Yeah, Cor Corvus was raised as a was raised pretty much as a slave. Um, mm-hmm. he was underneath the other slaves and like kept protected and stuff. But for the most part, he grew up and began to understand the terrible existence of this moon. And how awful it was to be a mining slave for these giant corporations and uh, mm-hmm. overlords. Uh, but all of his slaves were like, hey, you know, hold off a little bit. Wait a little <laughs> bit. Bide your time. You might be big Primarch man, but they've got bombs and stuff, you know, yeah. like you can only take so much. <laughs> they are well armed overlords. Like you can't just rush in there half cocked, you know. So. Basically, Corvus bides time for a while to pick the right moment to to rise up and overthrow the slave lords, um, which is also when he learned of his abilities. As we know, a lot of Primarchs have some kind of fancy shtick about sure. them. Sure. Uh, you know, like the for, inability to read and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's always a downside. <laughs> um, pros his and cons, was pros and cons. Pros, pros and cons. His was always being a step above the wardens in the sense of like he seemed like he was able to avoid detection basically wherever they tried to find him, even when he was in direct line of sight of an enemy. Oh, Um, so he's got stealth 100. It seems that he has the ability to really stealth himself in the minds of other people because it doesn't always work like aspects. Detection equipment, that kind of stuff would still check him out. Yeah. But if he was like standing in front of you, he could just kind of just don't even notice him, which sounds like he's got the usual thing where it's a, it's a little psychery. It's a little like yeah, invisible, sounds, you know, I was going to say, it sounds like he's got some some psycher abilities. If he can just be like, yeah, I'm standing right in front of me. You can't see me. I'm not the droids you're looking for type of thing. Yeah. I'm pretty positive every Primarch is like a little psychery. It's just to mm. the extent of to, what you yeah, refer yeah. To, to it as. To what degree can they do uh, or use their psychic ability, right? Right. Like Magnus is one thing as opposed <laughs> to 
Gilliman, whose psychic ability is math. Yeah, I, he, he does your taxes real well. He is the uh, like, CPA of the Imperium. Uh, so, as he learned of his abilities and he was able to kind of slip around undetected, him, he slowly started working with the slaves through the moon to gather weapons and, you know, different kinds of keys, sabotaging systems, uh, until eventually he sprung his rebellion that led to, in classic 40K fashion, brutal, bloody uprising. Ah, yes, we do love a good, brutal, bloody, gory uprising in 40K. Especially when it's against, like, slaver overlords, the bloodier and gory, the better. And, you know, like, not all the people who were the slaves were great. A lot of them were criminals, death row inmates, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, Corvus was like, hey, you guys are men of violence. I will use that <laughs> violence, but, yeah. uh, you know, fight for me and get us out of here and I'll let you I'll, I'll redeem you for your your past transgressions. Basically, <laughs> you can you can join me in the Imperium, which, eh, you know, yeah, eh. Eh, I guess it's a step up. Whoa, when they took oh. over the moon, they nuked the oppressor planet with nuclear mining charges on self-made rockets? What? Shy, I was getting there. Oh, That's I've next. been spoiled. I've been spoiled. Okay, okay, Shy, cut that part out. I'm going to, uh, Bricky, explain the part. No, 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 will, no we're keeping it in. so surprised, so surprised. The whole, the lesson of the war was that sometimes the innocent must suffer for the sake of all. The nuclear Boy. weapon stockpiled on the moon barraged the planet and the manufactorum cities below until they couldn't deal with the moon anymore and had to surrender. Boy, if that ain't the most uh, Imperium quote I've ever heard, I don't know what is. Sometimes, eh, the innocent gotta suffer. That's just war. Eh, you know, yeah. what are you gonna do? For the sake couple, of all. Couple million casualties? Eh, it's okay. We have billions more. Eh, dropping the bucket. Typical Kriegsman. Yeah, that's the most Imperium thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so it was then after they took over the moon, they were able to lead the rebellion and take the moon, that the Emperor finally arrived. Okay. The Emperor arrived, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was there for literally like a day. A day. He, wow, really? he talked he with Corvus. One day? Just for a day. He talked to Corvus for like a couple hours. Mm-hmm. And then after talking to him for a couple of hours, they, they spoke about like, you know, no one knows what they spoke about because, you know, they keep that shit to the grave. Of course. But talked about Corvus and like ways of war, the importance of it. And, and basically the emperor was like, leave and, and, and do, do this yourself. Uh, also, it was a possibility that the emperor may have confided some secrets of chaos to him. Uh, this this is kind oh. of the classic like emperor thing where he has these grand plans and machinations. You don't know what he's doing yet, but in reality, in the future, it will become important. Mm. His um, machinations lay undetected for years. Oh crap! Hold on, I I know that one. Wait, you, is that a might. Cozy D video? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, let's I remember that go. one. Let's go. The, the obvious the way you RPG this. villain. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but regardless, the moon of Lachaeus uh, was then renamed to Deliverance uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you know, the rebellion. Corvus was known as the Deliverer. Deliverer he was called yeah. the Deliverer as a kid. All that usual kind of stuff. Yeah. And the slave overlords of the uh, Kiavar planet, of course, surrendered. And everything was then uh, rebuilt. The Mechanicum arrived to take over the colony world and the planet. And it was then rebuilt to benefit the Imperium instead, which, you know, trade one villain for another. Yeah, I was going to say, like, well, hey, look, the slavers are back. Uh, and then good old Mr. Corvus actually took the black tower on the moon that had held the garrison of slave owners. And remade it into his fortress monastery for the Raven Guard Legion, known as the Raven Spire, which is Ooh. a really cool looking building. I'm not going to lie. That is very cool looking. Appropriate name too. cool name. The Raven Spire. Like it. Like it. Um, actually, I'm surprised that it go with like a like a like a bird motif and call it like the Raven's Nest or the Raven's Crook or something or something like that, you know? 
Maybe that's as too po- on the nose. I mean, I think they already have Raven in the name, so. Yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's too much to really lean into the bird theme. Anyway. Oh, oh, well, don't don't worry. Don't worry. Way down the line, Corvus <laughs> says something that is like that made me groan like oh, well, crazy. Like, please, please tell me later on, Corvus Korax, leader of the Raven Guard, is quoted as saying, caw, caw, please, okay. please. Okay, not, not that bad. Oh, now, now, now my day's ruined. I, I mean, it'll be pretty good. <laughs> Wait, tallest tower on <clears throat> tallest tower on Raven Spider is called Eerie. I, Irie, how's that pronounced? Like Lake. I'm having Eerie? a hard time with words today. Wait, well, we got some weird spelled words, right? You know, so which is a word for bird's nest. Hey, there you go. You got your you got your hey, bird motif. Hey, there we go. Yeah, let's go. Ah, uh, it's a bird's nest of a bird of prey. Ah, ah even more appropriate for the Raven Guard. Fantastic. So, uh, at this point, once Corvus had then received his legion. And the Emperor came back and was like, good job, son. Um, <laughs> he, it was then already a hundred years through the Great Crusade by the time he joined it. And as it should be unsurprising, his legion brought into battle uh, tactics of speed, you know, stealth, patience, mm-hmm. you know, ste- stealth attacks. Like lots of various yeah. stealthy versions of fighting. Very cool backpacks. Very cool backpacks. Uh, a lot of the other Primarchs didn't love it because they think anything other than run face into enemy is uh, cowardly. Um, is cowardly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and unlike the Alpha Legion, where the Alpha Legion is all about like military destabilization and espionage, the Raven Guard are more. Someone made a really good a really good point, which mm-hmm. is the Raven Guard don't want to be seen and don't want you to know that they were there. The Alpha Legion don't want to be seen, but wants you to know that they're there. <laughs> and the Night Lords want to be seen and want to be known that you're there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they certainly do. Who's uh, is that uh, Corvus Corax that Shai just posted on the bottom? No, yeah. he's missing his beautiful long hair. Oh, fair enough. But that's that's a really cool picture with like the uh, um, with the claws and everything. That's dope. Yeah, the, the, the classic talons, lightning claws will. are a. Yeah, the lightning claws are a, are a very big and important um, aspect of the Raven Guard because yeah, you know they're going every, really yeah every Raven needs his talons right yeah it's an interesting kind of in between when it comes to the Raven Guard because on one hand they love their jetpacks and and claws but on the other hand they love their long range snipers and stuff so it's it's like this weird huh. kind of in between where it's like super stealth. A stealth mode precision attacks at close range or lots of long range snipers and you know well that's that's it's, it's still like a, a level between. of uh precision and and being kind of stealthy because you know can't see them if they you know dome you from a hundred miles away true um with this as they were uh getting the raven guard sorted they actually of course got a lot of their legion from terra to begin with um the corvus wasn't too big of a fan of these guys because they <laughs> Are they, they felt I mean, he felt like they were a lot like the slave owners from back when. Shocking development that the uh, troops from the Imperium feel like slave owners. So a lot of the a lot of the higher higher command of the Terran Marines were assimilated into lower levels of command, brought back down into lower positions to kind of, you know, humble them a little bit. But uh, yeah, also very Mortarian like of him. (laughs) a little bit but after that working with the mechanicum especially the one that's now on kiavar they got all these kind of really cool new raven guard things they had like the shadow hawk which is a stealth thunder hawk there's the whisper nice. cutter which is a flyer that grab drops 10 troops in like pure silence you know wow. classic classic stealth stuff also, man, a stealth thunder. Does that look any different, the stealth thunderhawk? Because like usually those are pretty <laughs> chunky things. Like a it's, stealth. It's black. Was, it's kind of. It's oh, of course, of course, of course. It's just of course, of course. It's just jet. It's just jet black. All of it's their stuff jet is jet black. Okay. black. 
It doesn't All run. Their... It, like, I just figured since it probably ran like, you know how like uh, like the first time I ever rode in an electric car, it was unsettling because I was like, this thing, is this thing on? Did you start the engine? What is going on? And so I kind of figured maybe the thing would be like that where it has to look a little different because, but no, it's just, okay, it's jet black. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I mean, well, it does have other f- things that change for it, like how it operates, but we'll save that for Raven Guard. Okay, um, but if you like, if you ran it in the tabletop, you would just have a jet black Thunderhawk, pretty much. Okay. Uh, so after that, Corvus only had a couple of engagements in the Great Crusade, notable ones. That is, I mean, he obviously did plenty because he's a Primarch, goddamn. Yeah. Uh, but he had only a couple of notable ones. The first one that was pretty notable was the fact that he actually was the one who brought the Istvan system to heal. Uh, oh. We know the Isvan system as the the horrible massacres, but the system itself was under the guise of the Raven Guard. He was the one that brought it in line with the Imperial Truth, which uh, was not very hard because I think they were just humans and they were like, we reject you, Imperium. Then they're like, never mind. Yeah. And then a Primarch showed up and they're like, well, actually, we are we've we have become quite receptive to your dogma. Uh, Please stop killing us. That pretty much they surrendered, and then he yeah, bought them in quickly, line. probably. Yeah. Um. The one more interesting one was the Battle of Gate Forty Two. Uh, this was one of the first major deployments as with Horus as the new War Master, newly elected, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. Or you know, placed. I guess not necessarily elected. But okay. Uh, what it was was Horus was having uh, hi- uh Corvus. Is Lehman Russ, Percherabo, and, and someone else. I don't quite, I don't really remember. Um, I think Adam, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not important. Um, yeah, sure. But they were going to deal with these alien kind of cre- Xenos creatures that were kind of controlling a couple of these worlds. It was a pretty tough engagement, really, really, really difficult one because some of these Xenos are pretty nasty. Okay. And he asked to have Corvus lead the front lines. And Corvus was like, not really my thing, boss. <laughs> well, that's true because he's more of a, they're more stealthy. They don't necessarily want to be uh, the focal point at the front lines and, and be telling everyone what to do, right? Yeah, he doesn't, well, he doesn't want to be the, the first of the fray. That's yeah. not really their thing. Yeah, um, they just want to sweep like, around in the shadows as fast as possible and strike without being seen. Yeah, and, and he tells Horace this. He's like, that uh that's not really my cup of tea. That's not really my thing. Like, I don't think it's a good idea. And then Pratrabo was like, You're a goddamn coward, you you imbecile. <laughs> what are you scared of fighting? What are you worried about losing some men, you idiot? I kill a tenth of my men all the time. Yeah, he does, that's true. <laughs> He's not wrong. He does he, he did. Um he sure did. The two of them got pretty mad. I think Lehman Russ kind of pushed them aside and was like, Yeah, calm down, calm down. Um but Corvus was stuck with the was saddled with front lines. Oh, so no. they sent him to fight, and my god, were those Xenos prepared? They Oh no. Well, so what Xenos are these? Just unspecified Xenos what? Uh it, it's a, it's another one of those Great Crusade random Xenos that died in the Great Crusade. Oh, okay. They just um, get genocide and are never heard from again. Uh, pretty much. It's the it's the classic case of those. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I don't remember exactly their name. It was like the the, the mind masters or some kind of thing like that. Uh, kind of, yeah, just kind of controlling all of the various people yeah. on the planet, okay. and it made it really really hard to get to, to get in there. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, uh, Corvus was like, "All right, I'm stuck with this this shit end of the deal. <laughs> I'm gonna do, I'm gonna deal with this." Mm-hmm. So the People he sent in the front lines were mostly the Terran born ones. Of course, of course. Why they, not? Well, they were the ones that were the most apt to doing a frontline assault. They they weren't the ones from Deliverance. They weren't the the more Raven Guardy group. They were the ones who just run forward and are are, are cool with that. So That's true. That's what like, they were trained for. They were from Terra. They were trained to be frontline soldiers, so you might as well use them what they're good at. Yeah. Yeah, and so he did exactly that, and they got killed. <laughs> they got slaughtered. 
But he <laughs> lost a substantial <laughs> amount of troops and only with himself on the battlefield and some desperate <laughs> final heroics was he able to actually breach the lines and get to the aliens. It was I love um, that. and boy did they get killed. <laughs> It was a bad gig <laughs> all around. Corvus. Oh, man. Corvus well, was none too happy. I'm sure. Did, did he go back to Horace and be like, I told you so. I tried to tell you, but no. Are you going to listen to me? No. Still said no. Was he really sassy about it? Little, okay, Corvus is not the sassy type. <laughs> okay, fair. But still. I I'm I know he was very pissed, yes. Yeah. But it, I ironically it actually gave him um a, a bit of a, a bit of a, a, a hand in the upcoming events. Oh. A lot of the Terran born Marines that were sent out were the same ones in the warrior lodges that Horace's group were also chilling in. Mm-hmm. And so with a lot of them dead, Horus's ability to sway Corvus and the Raven Guard towards chaos in the future was actually pretty blunted. Oh, so so Corvus wouldn't trust Horus because like, oh, man, you had no idea what you were doing. You sent me on the front lines. You got everybody killed. Why would I join you? Is it kind of like that idea? No, n- not quite. Like like oh. more a lot of the, the heresy and issues kind of kind of spread from internally and then those kind of got made to the primarch so a lot of the terran born marines in his legion that were part of the warrior lodges and therefore would have become corrupted died here ah okay so he just so had, it's like okay, gotcha like horace's like grip on the raven guard and like influence on them waned really heavily because they all died sure okay gotcha now, does that mean uh, Corvus would have joined Horus? Eh, I'd say probably not. Um, but well, it he would have had a harder. better chance if you if Horus was like, "Oh yeah, you're really good at being stealthy and stuff." No, no, no. Let Corvus hang back and do his thing. Right? It, it would have had a better chance rather than being like, "Nah, go in the front. Fuck you." Right? He he definitely shot himself in the foot a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So. Regardless, though, after that, and he had a, a bit of a punished legion after the Battle of Gate 42, came a uh, another lovely, lovely situation oh, no. uh, that we like to call the Drop Site Massacre. <laughs> ah, yes. Lovely, lovely incident. Truly just a bed of roses, rainbow sunshine, everybody hugging. Just, mm. You know? Truly, that Drop Site Massacre was just... Ugh. just starting to think... You might be sarcastic here. Pricky me? Sarcastic? <laughs> shut, shut your ass up. <laughs> Why? Well, I am shocked. Look at you God say this about me. We're about to talk about the, the we're about to talk about the Raven Guard just like dying, and you're gonna be like, whoa! <laughs> no, I thought it was fun. All right, all right. So, of course, you know uh, we we've talked about the drop site massacre uh, yes. like sixteen times couple already. Times. But yeah, a couple couple times. Well, we'll do it again. As we all, all right. know, Horus arrives. He has his boys. He has his Death Guard and, and World Eaters, and they're all fighting. And then it's like, go take them down, go kill them, and then they do, and then and then and then good yeah, old sure uh, Night Lords and Word Bearers and and. Uh, uh, Iron Warriors all turn on them. Lorgar! Lorgar! Stop shooting our troops, says the word bearer. <laughs> Lol, no, says the Iron no, Warrior. I, think I will. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, to, to really put into perspective, though, like, they were fighting this pretty tough battle, and then as a lot of, like, swaths of Raven Guard backed up to allow them to be reinforced, you basically need to imagine them walking back up to the top of a hill. And then on that top of the hill is like Ugh. all of those legions with bolt guns and they just start firing like indiscriminately. Yep. yep. And they've got the high ground and there's just you got no chance. You got no chance. E- well, I guess even if they didn't have the high ground, they still basically have no chance. It's just that's just bad all around. The whole point of the drop site massacre was remove the pawns from the game. Get yeah. rid of of these legions. and. Ferris Manus and the Iron Hands got crushed. Vulcan got crushed. 
And Corvus whoa, as well. Whoa, whoa, also, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ferris Manus got ahead of himself. He got to make the. He got to make the hedge. No head. N- no head. <laughs> no head. <laughs> Sorry. <That's true. laughs> you got to. You have to. You can't just Look, gloss over. I'm, Ferris I'm not. Manus I'm not apologizing like that. <laughs> I'm not apologizing. Ferris Manus fans bad. Iron Hands fans okay. <laughs> Iron Hands just, are a million times cooler than Ferris Manus. Ooh! So it's everybody, true. everybody's dead. Everybody, every well, loyalists, they're dying. Yeah. Well, if so you if you next? remember, if you remember well, the uh, first Heretic book, you had the lovely, lovely fight between Lorgar and uh, Corvus. Oh yeah, yeah, because uh, Lorgar was out there with his Galvor back, Argel Tall, and all of his possessed guys, mm-hmm. and Corvus was like, "Wow." This is awful. I'm going to kill all of you. <laughs> and he just starts like butchering them. And I mean, proceeds to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, tears them apart limb from limb. Each of the yeah. Galvorback and Lorgar is like, oh my God, my sons. <laughs> good luck. Good, good luck. So, so Lorgar in his bit stronger form now kind of goes up and. <laughs> Battles Corvus Corax, while Corvus then proceeds to trounce him. Yeah, he beats the ever-loving piss out of Lorgar. It's not even close from what I remember in the book, right? He is just getting absolutely worked over. It, it, I literally remember reading Corvus trying to kill and Lorgar trying desperately to stay alive. Yeah, trying to just survive, yeah. Yeah, Cor- Corvus ab- is pretty metal when he fights. Like, not only Hell does yeah. he have all of the the wing, or all of the claws and stuff, but he's got these giant, like, serrated, eviscerated wing jetpacks that he uses as weapons as well. Oh, it's really so cool. Cool. I love the jetpacks on the Raven Guard. They're so great. Ah, and I'm, I mean, during this big old duel, he does shank Lorgar dead in the chest with a <laughs> bunch of talons. And the only reason, only reason he did not kill him was that Conrad Kurz arrived to block his blow with his sword. Yep. And and then, you know, Corvus hit his jetpack, flew really high into the air away. And that was the end of the of the battle there. And then (sighs) Conrad Kurz was like, Lorgar, you I hate you. I hate everything about you. And then he leaves (laughs) as we all do, as we all do with Lorgar. Well written villain. But we oh, man. What I've a- grown to love Lorgar, honestly, man. He he is he is a bit of a slime ball. He's a bit of a slime ball, but he's a well written. Yeah. Like he's a he's a great villain. Like he should be the villain of the story. That's sort of a holier than thou sort of uh, a jerk tyrant. I I like I like the guy who's just so unfathomably into himself, and, <laughs> yeah. and but like still kind of cares, but only cares so long as he is the one that has all the knowledge and is the is the kind one yep until someone like proves him wrong or he whatever and then he just blows his top and just yeah he's easily angered mm-hmm. yep. uh, but so after this horrible drop side massacre and corvus flying out of it you know his sons just get completely butchered um yeah. and he eventually boards a thunderhawk that's leaving barely but that Thunderhawk gets shot down and they land somewhere on the farther side of the um, of Isvam, in which they are stuck there. Him and a contingent of Raven Guard for like 90 days. Ooh, wow. Constantly being hunted by the traitors there trying to find them. And but, you know, they're Raven Guard, so they're pretty good at hiding. Yeah. And you got a Primarch on your side, so you're good. Also true for now. So they're doing pretty well at keeping themselves hidden for the most part until near the end where uh, where the worst person to possibly find him finds him, which is Angron. Ooh, of Angron, all the people. Classic Angron just finds him and starts to like to butcher his way up to him. Uh, but at the last second, they get airlifted uh, by a couple of the 
a ship sent from the Raven Spire, and then they eventually escape. You know, classic like last stand. They finally get away. Oh type yeah, deal. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just barely escape. Yeah, Whew, man. Yeah, you don't want to listen. I don't care how badass of a Primarch you think you are. You do not want a one v one Angron. You barely want to like one hundred v one Angron. A- Ang- Angron. I, I mean, actually, a lo- I think a lot of a lot of Primarchs could give Angron a run for his money in the in the duel. Uh, pr- well, pre. Uh, Ascension Angron. <laughs> yeah. um, Ascension Angron is a whole like, yeah, nah. A, a lot of, I mean, you know, well, Gilliman can't. Gilliman hasn't won like a single Primarch fight. <laughs> Gilliman was getting absolutely obliterated by Angron. But like, I, I feel like the lion could probably take Angron even bef- like, like before in, in 30k. Oh, well, maybe the, maybe the, the Khan, maybe, maybe Fulgrim. Mm. You think see, Fulgrim I always could see, take Angron? Like, Fulgrim's I always good, see, don't get me wrong, but uh, Angron? Uh. I always see Angron as more of a, like, okay, all, all right, contestants, and <laughs> ahead of you is one million servitors. Whichever one of you can kill the most fastest wins. Yeah. I think Angron trounces everybody on that one. <laughs> yes, I think Angron definitely wins the slaughter a thousand troops in front of you race. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but he's, in a he's duel, all about it's a little the more, yeah. Skulls for corn, you know? Yeah, definitely. Anyway, I'm sure I'm sure many people will fight me on this, and that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's who funny. who would win in a Primarch duel is one of those like hardcore nerd arguments, like can a lightsaber cut through Wolverine's claws that I just don't want to get into? Well, they probably could, but he'd just regenerate them really quick because he's Wolverine. DK, stop. I'm, well, I'm just saying you asked the question. No, I did not. It was a hypothetical. Yeah, and I answered it hypothetically. Anyway. Right, well, uh, anyway. So wh- wh- where, 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 where were we? Not Curse. Corvus. Yeah. Corax. Sorry, my Night Lord's coming out. Um, so Corvus Corax had 80,000 troops. Corvus Corax has, now has 5,000. Ooh boy! I mean, yeah, he—they were part of the drop site massacre, so it's like your legion is gonna get. If you survive that, your legion has got to be absolutely toasted. He got walloped, and so yeah, he was taken completely out of the Harris Horus Heresy, and he needed to figure out. All right, how do I get more troops like <laughs> fast? Mm-hmm. So he was taken to Terra. A little capsule or whatever, uh, along with some of his troops, and he and he communed with the emperor, which was uh, against a lot of other people's personal opinions, like Dorne and stuff, because the emperor was currently holding off the demons from Magnus's breakthrough. And oh yeah, yeah. The emperor was in, not in great spirits. <laughs> you uh, don't say. But uh, he spoke with him, and the emperor told him, deep, deep down in the vault of Terra, there is in fact <laughs> un. Me, um, unmolested Primarch gene seed like Ooh. not it was assumed that they were all destroyed but not this kind of stuff this stuff is pure like pure perfect Primarch gene seed oh that'll get you some troops real quick that'll get you some troops real fast <laughs> yeah. people will, will take to it faster they'll 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 handle the the effects better the whole nine yards. It, so, good old Corvus made 500 troops with this Gene C as quick as he could. Mm-hmm. And they came out amazing. Just, <laughs> as, well, as well they should. It's pure Gene Seed. Just fantastic. Like they were, they were strong. They were, they were solid. The aspirants took to it really easily. They had a low death rate, unlike normal space marine implantation. Uh, but also, how long have has this pure gene seed been under there? And is there like a limited quantity of it? Like, could you only make five hundred troops with it? Uh, it's been there since the Primark projects to begin with. Uh, there is a limited quantity, this? but okay, not not for five hundred. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, why hadn't they used it before? Now, like, if it makes these super soldiers, why don't you just make everything out of this pure gene seed? I mean, there is still it's left over from like the Primark project before yeah. the Primarchs were made into separate entities, into people. Okay. It's it's just there's just not enough. There's, there's nothing left there. Okay. Um but they made five hundred. They were the Raptors. 
Stuff was great. Things were cool. Mm-hmm. So then there was these snake dudes that were kind of like, how can we screw this up? <laughs> there were these snake dudes that were like, how do we screw this? Up? Okay. T- tell me more yeah. about these snake dudes. Sounds like so the, the, what is the lair? Dude? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, Alfari is an <laughs> Omega. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha. I was, I was thinking about the wrong serpent. Sorry. So Alpharius and Omegon, uh, during the time that they were hiding away in the drop site massacre, got Alpha Legion troops disguised as Raven Guard into the group. Oh, no, of course they did. <sighs> Goddamn Alpha Legion. And so naturally, they're seeing what's going on here and they're like, "Ooh! not only would it be great to have <laughs> some of that stuff for us, but it would even be funnier if we took this dark mechanicum concoction of like demon blood and stuff and mixed it with all the gene seed. Oh, no. <laughs> Wouldn't so that be hilarious? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh, that does not sound good. That sounds like an abomination waiting to happen. Tell me more. Well, they did exactly that. And Corvus, none the wiser, made a bunch more Marines. Oh, and they came no. out wrong. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, how did they turn out, Bricky? Oh, mutated beyond belief. Horns, <laughs> extra limbs, all kinds of awful, awful demonic crap. Oh, Mental okay. issues, so on and so forth. All right, that's great. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, pain yep. existence. All right, we're back in Spain without the, uh, without the S. It it was pretty bad. They they were very bad. But Corvus, the guy that he is, the cool guy he is, kind of loved them all the same. Oh, that's nice. He let them still serve under different circumstances. He was like, as as awful as this has become, you're still members of the Raven Guard. You are still Aww. my sons. I will treat you well. All those kinds of things. Biggie could learn a thing or two from old Corvus. Biggie could learn a thing or two. B- Biggie like, could learn being a, a good lot. dad. Well, he, yeah, yeah. Imagine that. Imagine being a good dad in 40k. Absolutely shocking. Yeah, that so, that is the most grim, dark thing I've heard since the start of this podcast. So, for the rest of Horus Heresy, Corvus didn't do much. He helped run some hit and run attacks, did a little bit of stealth combat, uh, helped with the lion a little bit, but you know he wasn't really there during the siege of Terra. During the the final climax, much like the lion wasn't in a few others. Yeah. Uh, as we know, Horus. Dirt, wait, where, where's my? Where, here it is. <laughs> Horus dies. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. That's, d- that's dies a horrible Horus death. Mm-hmm. The emperor goes to the throne. Classic stuff. Classic. Classic. So, after that. With nothing really left to do, and finally the Raven Guard returning to a decent force after the heresy, it then came time for Gilliman to take over and create the uh, the I think it's the sec- second founding. I it's the sure. one where he splits up all the chapters into groups of a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that the uh, horse so, heresy can never happen again. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, no, no amount of power yeah. uh, gives to to <clears throat> one man. Um. Corvus didn't love this, but he begrudgingly accepted it, which is the case of a lot of the Primarchs. Yeah, and sure. split his groups up. But there was the downside. What do we do with the mutants? I was about to ask, like, what happens to the mutant soldiers that got, uh, you know, that Papa Papa still loves you? Don't worry. Oh, I, I was I was gonna ask, but this may be jumping the gun. If there was like a, if they're like special uh, tabletop minis for these mutated guys but something tells me that they're all going to be liquefied and burning fire because they're mutants and they never get a mini here let me uh let me actually show you their their mini oh they do have a mini let's go yes let me go ahead give me a I moment thought for sure that at some point some imperium creep would find them and convince gilliman to like you know murder them and melt them in acid or something all right are you ready yeah 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 Here's their mini. Oh, boy. All right. That's... Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, Bricky. It was I, the per- it was the perfect setup. I'm sorry, I had to. I don't. I I don't much like you right now. I don't. Uh, I don't, Corvus I don't much, I don't was, much care for you right now, Bricky. Corvus did not know how to deal with it, and eventually, after so much time trying to figure out what was the right concept, he realized the only way he could deal with this and to atone for his sins was to give them the Emperor's mercy (sighs) and to to kill all of his mutated sons. Oh, man, that's that. Well, that sucks. They they weren't living great lives to begin with, all of the mutated sons. True. Um, But with the slow religious fervor that the Imperium was starting to adopt post-Death Emperor, this would not have gone well at all. Yep. At some point, someone would have come along and killed them anyway, and Corvus might have been marked as a a heretical primarch for housing mutants, and yeah, at some point the Imperium would have found him and been none too pleased about it. So Corvus now so racked with guilt eventually exiled himself into his Raven Spire tower uh, to just like honestly pray to for, oh. for forgiveness for the emperor, like, like anything to anything against his, uh, for his soul. A- oh, and so he just, exiles just, himself because he had to kill his mutant kids. Yep. Oh, he's, he's begged for the recently ascended emperor's mercy as it's said. Wow. Um, he, Corvus is a good dad. Uh, after that, one year to the day after uh, exiling himself to the tower, he left. Never ever to be seen again as his, and I swear to God, as his last recorded words were, never Whoa. more. <laughs> wow, on the nose, never more. Quote never the Raven, more. never more. Okay. I know. Wow. I mean, call, call, I would have preferred. Okay. All right, GW. Okay, okay, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Why not? All right, okay, okay, okay. I know, I know, I know, dude. It, it, uh, <laughs> it got, it got me. Um, so it's just so heartwarming. It's just so tragic. So, just everyone that doesn't really know where he went, uh, but Korax, uh, we know where he went. Korax Gorgar! Took, you know, he took up his role as a, as justice made manifest. Took his time in the Raven Spire and decided to enter the Eye of Terror in pursuit of the Traitor Legions, in particular the son of a bitch in, God- <laughs> in the goddamn tower, Lorgar. Hell yeah, hell yeah! And long, long exposures of the warp has mutated him to much more of the vibe that we expect. Uh, you know, it, it's your mental, it's your thoughts, it's your your concepts made pure. Yeah. And so Lorgar can do all kinds of wacky stuff. He's mutated and weird. He can literally turn into a giant flock of ravens. Uh, he moves like a wispy mass sometimes if he wants to. He's almost like Velikor, honestly. It's very cool, though. Also, is a I always get him mixed up. A flock of ravens, is that a conspiracy of ravens? or? Yeah, I think it's a conspiracy of ravens and a murder of crows. It's actually right? conspiracy... Of ravens. It's what you call like a group of them, right? What is a raven's conspiracy? Now, a group of ravens is called an unkindness, but you can also refer to oh. them as a rave, conspiracy, treachery, or flock. Love it. I, I, I love those weird names for like groups of animals. Like like moose and meese. Or no, like a murder of crows. <laughs> uh, did you know a group of giraffes? It's called a tower of giraffes. Well, that one's pretty on the nose. Yeah, I like that one. But yeah, anyway, sorry. We're, we're a little off topic. But uh, Shai makes a good point. Yeah, Lorgar says that Corvus is not a demon. He, yeah, he's not like... There's, there's a, it's hard to describe because I say the word demon because I think of like demon bird. But he's yeah. not a demon as we know in 40K. He is a a like refined version of his mental psyche and his mental psyche screams for murder. (laughs) He's like, well, okay. So when Corvus goes into the warp, he gets like essentially warp refined. And now he's got all these crazy powers, but he's not a demon. So he's not chaos. So he can still be a primarch, right? Exactly. Well, I mean, whether he's accepted as a primarch is one thing, but 
Um, Maybe more Primarchs yes. need to take a dip in the warp pool then. Get them some freaky ass powers, you know? You know, I couldn't hurt. I don't I, I think it could hurt. I think it could hurt quite a bit. I, I, I'm curious. How would Gilliman get like warp refined? Do you think he would just get a better suit that goes over his like armor or something like that? How would Gilliman he would get, get a warp, warp refined? He would get a warp tux and then he would go to the warp version of Goldman Sachs Bank in New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! If uh, Ultramarine yeah. fans weren't uh, angry with me enough already, oh boy. Anyway, yeah, the, the lion, the lion got his teleport powers type stuff. Oh, um, right, because he, he was in the warp for a little bit. That's true. Ooh, uh, Shia would like to add a few things on Cor- Corax's personality. If you'd like to read this, ooh, sure. Oh, wow, that is a wall of text, but I got you. Korax, one of the few Primarchs who actually had maternal figures in his life since he was raised by the village and also had a major mother figure in a woman named Nasturi, who he saved from a slaver by literally ripping his head off. Oh, good on you. Uh, She was one of the few people who would be able to talk down to him and tell him to chill out if he got out of hand. Thanks to being around decent people, uh, personally personally experiencing lots of tyranny firsthand, he actually turned out as one of these few stable Primarchs who was, by the most part, rational, though sometimes prone to outbursts of pride. Uh, That was mainly because he was a freedom fighter at heart who was convinced that he is on the right side of history and that the uh, ends justify the means. In many ways, he is close to Kurz, but, you know, not pans on the head insane. (laughs) Pants on the head insane, and he also really cared about the people, and especially his sons, which eventually led to his depressive downfall. Yeah, he seems makes like a, a, a good guy, a good Primarch. Like, it's like, man, if only Corvus Corax could have been, like, head of the Imperium, maybe, you know, things would have been different. It's one of those, um, it's one of those <coughs> things where people often talk about Corvus and Kurz, and it's one of the things that, that Corvus sometimes thinks about a lot, where he's like, if I landed on the Stromo instead, would I be just like him? And oh, if yeah, Kurz probably, landed right? on on Deliverance and had maternal figures and wasn't, you know, scrounging around in the vents of a hive world eating rats and people, yeah. would would he have turned out better? That's kind of the question. Probably. I mean, because like Nostromo, I, <laughs> that sucks. Nostromo sucks. If you're going to survive on Nostromo, you're going to end up the way Kurz did. Like, there's just, there's kind of no two ways about it. So, Well, I, I don't think it's necessarily about the planet. Because don't forget, he was on a slave world, um, Corvus Tr- was. True. I think but again, more... at least he had those maternal figures that, like, you know, right. that he cared about. Like, on Nostromo, Kurz had nothing and no one, but, like, just the savagery of death, right? I think it's uh, definitely like a, a an upbringing thing or a raising sure. thing. Oh, Kurz, yeah, Kurz got the gangs and Corvus got the slaves, but at least the slaves kind of worked with each other and helped each other out. Yeah. Nature versus yeah. nurture. Sure. Sure. But uh, at the moment, uh, Lorgar is actually pretty insane. Um, he <laughs> Lorgar right now is no, I don't mean mentally like. Like Lorgar, who's the the really tall dude from Three Hundred? The 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 villain. Oh, um, uh, I forget his name. It starts with an X, Xerxes. I think. Xerxes. Yes, Lorgar is like that. His skin is like bright gold now, ah, and, and he thinks himself a god. He he is based like I think we've seen that image of Lorgar with all the big horns and stuff, but they describe him more in the book where he fights Corvus as a lot more of like a Xerxes vibe. Um, ah, okay. Which I think is pretty fun, but but yeah, Corvus is on his tower murdering all the word bearers there <laughs> in this crazy demon bird form. Mm-hmm. Uh, and eventually the two of them fight again, uh, but Lorgar is a lot better now than he was before. Yeah. Um, still, couldn't beat him uh, and had to run <laughs> back into his tower again. And uh, right, so right. now... Now Lorgar is current, or no, nor Corvus now was for a while around the around the tower trying to get at him. Mm-hmm. Uh, as Lorgar, as he left, had two runes flare on the door blocking him that says "Deny Fate." Oh, and so Lorgar cool, says, actually. "Lorgar says deny fate," 
and Corvus for the longest time was genuinely doing a let me in Lorgar <laughs> I'm gonna kill you I'm gonna rip your bones from your body <laughs> I uh, just posted that meme and I was like that is the most appropriate gift to post ever the let me in I <laughs> Uh, I okay, think sorry. Lorgar has has left. I believe in our current timeline, he's out doing awful chaos things in the real space again. Lorgar is like insanely juiced right now. He's he's arguably one of the strongest Primarchs after all this time. Oh wow, he got juiced up that much by chaos, huh? L- Lorgar is like a shadow of his, or um, his old Lorgar is a shadow of his new stuff. He is. Literally, like, haloed by chaos warp fire. The, the, the dude is insane. I don't know if I've seen a picture of modern Lorgar. Well, I don't there's know if a there really are any of modern Lorgar, actually. Cause it- there's a really bad picture of him with horns, uh, but <laughs> that's about it. I, I think, and yeah, I don't even think those are canon anymore. I think we got to wait till Lorgar comes into the story more. Right, right. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So when he comes back, he is going to be like a rampaging force. Like you, it's, it's going to be very hard to stop Lorgar. He's not going to be sort of the, the Primarch punching bag that he used to be. Not in the slightest. I, I would Ooh. imagine this might be a bit of a, of a bet, but I think out of all the current Primarchs that we have on the tabletop, like Mortari and Magnus and Angron, I think he is the strongest uh, of them all, but for like different wow. reasons. Well, yeah, because he's chaos juice, like to the gills. I'm actually kind of surprised the chaos guys don't. The chaos put so much effort into Abaddon. They should really be putting it into Lorgar. Maybe Lorgar <laughs> yeah. just doesn't care. And he wants to read books. Probably, probably. Well, regardless, uh, that's where Corvus is at right now. Corvus is still hunting down as many traitors as he can uh, after getting ultra depression from murdering a lot of his sons and. Or fair executing and sounds like a better word. Yep, fair um, and valid, fair and valid. And uh, and yeah, Corvus is is interesting. I'm I'm un- upset that he has as little lore as he does. Um, yeah, because he sounds like such an interesting character that like man, it, it'd be nice if he had more lore. Gar. Yeah, but he he got a lot of the uh, he he got a lot of the well yeah he actually has the perfect quad section of issues when it comes to lore which is no dedicated book for his upbringing um found lay in the crusade kill or or killed slash massively hurt in the drop site massacre and also is not currently in the current day 40k as he is whereabouts (laughs) unknown like dorn and lehman and con yeah it almost sounds like one of those cases where, like, they didn't really have a lot planned for him, so they're just like, "Let's hit him with the, let's hit him with the quadfecta of uh, don't have to worry about him for a while, and then we'll burn the bridge when we get to it." I I feel like compared to a lot of the other Primarchs, we're not going to be seeing Corvus for a while, which is unfortunate. Yeah. But um, I kind of get it only because the other Primarchs have a lot more. Like, like, Dorn has a lot of lore, comparatively. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually excited for when Dorn comes back. His his mini is going to be tight, 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 tight. Yeah, I, I mean, Shy is right. GW did say that every Primarch who's not dead is coming back, which I believe. But considering that we were getting a Primarch, like, once in addition, and that's, like, every three years, I'll talk to yeah. you when Corvus comes back in ten Nine years. Nine years, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, see you in a decade, folks. Like I hope that we're might, still doing this in a decade, by the way, to to cover that. By the by, that that genuinely might not even be too far from the truth. Oh, really? That's I I mean, it might take a decade. It really might, because if if let's say let's say it's every three years for start starting now, uh, it will oh, probably you no. Know, yeah, actually. Yeah. Dorn, Khan, Lehman. I mean, Dorn and Lehman and the Khan probably will come back for maybe a Vulcan. God damn it. Oh, so it might be more than 10 years, bro. Oh. It, it might be a real long time. Oh, man. Poor Corvus. Is Unless this what I murdered my love. boys for? Anyway. And meanwhile, we have Percherabo and stuff. Anyway. Corvus is a cool guy. He, he's it's a kind of a tragic feeling uh, because he yeah. is such a bring down the oppressors kind of guy. But now we're in 40K, which is 
oppressor is its middle name. Yeah. So, oh, man. It, it's, is... it'll be a fun thing to talk about when we talk about the Raven Guard, where it sucks that they are who they are in the world because they're so, like, yeah, Lalo the there's, Tyrant. Yeah, it, 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 there's this just, oh, like, there's this, like, overhanging feeling of, like, bittersweet with, like, Corvus Corax and the Raven Guard. It's not, like, full-on ultra-depression, but it's, like... It's almost like this black cloud that just sort of hangs over, like, you know, it's like, it's not super ultra depressing, but it's like, oh man, it's not good either. It's not, it's not great at the end, regardless. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, next week, Raven Guard. We'll talk more about the Raven Guard and all of their really fun, silly stealth things that are put on 500 pound soldiers. Yeah, you, you're not get, you're not gonna get me with the quote next time. I'm ready. Yeah, let's go. Shall, let's change the episode up. Oh no, don't do that. Please don't. Please, I look stupid that, enough that, on my own. Please give me give me a hell break, yeah. Man. We both do. Let's go. Let's go. Stupidity rules. <laughs> <laughs>